Well, tonight the world is watching as Syrians pour into the streets, cheering the downfall of a 50-year reign of terror. This after a lightning-fast rebel offensive toppled Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. He's now seeking refuge in Russia. And after news spread that he fled the country, joyful crowds gathered in the streets of Damascus, waving the Syrian revolutionary flag in scenes that recalled the early days of the Arab Spring. But now questions remain over what happens next. And tonight, President Biden on the issue from the White House, saying this is a moment of joy for Syrians, but also a moment for caution. It's a moment of historic opportunity for the long-suffering people of Syria to build a better future for their proud country. It's also a moment of risk and uncertainty. As we all turn to the question of what comes next, the United States will work with our partners and the stakeholders in Syria to help them seize an opportunity to manage the risks. Now, the president says the United States will support Syria's neighbors, including Jordan, Lebanon, Iraq, and Israel, should any threat arise from Syria during the transition period. And tonight, there is also a celebration happening right here in the DMV after the fall of the Syrian government. This coming as more than 5 million Syrians were forced to flee the country because of the brutality of the Assad regime. 7 News' is Liana Golden is hearing from a man here in D.C. who fled Syria at the start of the civil war and asking what this means for the future of his homeland. From the steps of the White House to 6,000 miles away in Syria's capital city of Damascus. It has been surprising for sure. Syrians everywhere are celebrating the fall of now former President Bashar Assad marking the end of the decades-long regime and 13-year civil war. Now Assad is gone and was merely a paper tiger. 7 News spoke with Kitaiba Adibi, a senior fellow at the Atlantic Council. He fled Syria with millions of other families when the war started in 2011. But today he rejoiced instead at Lafayette Square once the news broke that the rebels' offensive was successful and Assad had reportedly fled to Russia. We've dealt with different models of regime change and transition towards democracy with Iraq, with Libya. But if we look at the, what's happened in the last 10 days, this has been the most peaceful compared to what happened. Um, almost no civilian casualties in the last 10 days, but it's also the most peaceful in the sense that no civilian centers were destroyed. What does this mean for the families of hundreds of thousands of people who have been killed under the Assad regime and the millions who had to flee? It's a moment where they feel justice, um, that the Assad regime is gone. With images of Assad's face strewn about on the streets of the capital, Ildibi says the future is unknown. Do you have any idea what tomorrow will bring in Syria? I don't know. Um, I think no one really knows. Um, I'm optimistic. Um, I think the way the rebels have dealt with this whole situation, again, after all of these years of war, is something that Syrians really need to be proud of. He's hopeful that the post-Assad transition will be a peaceful one, as millions look to this new chapter that starts today. I think it's a once in a lifetime or maybe once in generations opportunity to be able part of a uh, part of building a new republic in the district i'm liana golden 7 news